Welcome to the Ghostman Radio Station. And tonight is a return guest, Leonard Perlmutter. Who is Leonard? Well, he's a founder and director of the American Meditation Institute in Anvaril Park, New York, all for the best selling The Heart and Science of Yoga and originator of the National Conscious Month. He also serves as author and editor of Transformation Journal of Meditation as Mind and Body and Medicine. Over the past 25 years, he has served on one of the facilities, New York Institution of Everett Medicine in Boston, Massachusetts, and International Me- Me- Hillmanian Yoga Teachers Association. He is studying in record. India, the direct disciple Swami Ramaye, or the Illuminae, is a man who, in laboratory conditions at the Mina Institution, demonstrate the blood pressure heart rate can be voluntarily controlled. These research demonstrations have been one of the major cornerstones of the mind body movement. He has presented inf- informative workshops to benefit from meditation, and yoga, and science. And Commonwealth Club of California, University of Wisconsin School of Nursing, Washington University Medical School, University of Colorado Medical School, U.S. Military Academy of West Point Association of Graduates. Since 2009, his heart and science of yoga empowering self-care program has been certificated for continuing medical education credits by the American Medical Association and medical and American Nurses Association for continuing medical credit, educational credit. And in 2014, he created a five half hour video online video course, Comprehensive Meditation, the Easy Gentle Yoga, was released. Claims the heart, the core, heart and science of yoga curriculum. He lives and teaches in Amberville, New York. And, then, and today he's talking about his lovely book, which you mentioned before, but we will go over again because it is fascinating in my eyes. The key to unlock the limitless wisdom and creativity and solve all of life's challenges. Which, as I said, Leonard, that's... And so welcome, Leonard, to the show. And how have you been since uh, we uh, last talked? Well, uh, I've been busy. I've been very busy. I've had podcasts uh, and uh, many uh, teaching opportunities. We have a new foundation course that is beginning uh, in January 11th, and that's a six-week course, and that uh, gives uh, folks the entire overview of the mind-body medicine curriculum that, that we teach called the Heart and Science of Yoga. Now, people who may be tuning in, can you explain a little bit about the theory behind the, the yoga as such? Because I, I know it's been around probably pre-Christ, I would thought, in, I, I, as not far as I know. I would agree with that. All of his his words uh, are totally in alignment with yoga. And yoga, uh, to demystify it, and I know that most people think that it has a lot to do with physical exercise, and there are exercises called yoga, but it's even more far-reaching than that. Yoga is a philosophical scientific bridge that connects our outer action with our inner wisdom. The definition of yoga simply means union. Union. The union of our thoughts, words, and actions with the super conscious wisdom that we all have access to through our conscience. And what, what is your, what do you think is the main benefits people get from reading the book? I think the main benefit for me was uh, 
had less physical, mental, emotional, and even spiritual pain in my life. And the corollary to that was that I felt better. I felt better on a physical level, mental level, an emotional level, and a spiritual level. For me, from my experience, those are the, the take-home messages. I know you broke your book down into quite a few interesting and well-written and informative chapters. And I, I think there's quite a good description in your book. I like the book which says, Your conscience presents a simple explanation of your four functions of the mind, senses, ego, unconsciousness and conscience. Now, you've mentioned before about these uh, four functions, but can you tell people again why we use them and how we don't use them at the same time? How about if I uh, mention how we don't use them first? Yes, that would make more sense. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, first of all, you have to understand uh, that the conscience makes every decision Every choice we have ever made, every choice we will ever make, is always made by the conscience. The ego, the senses, and the unconscious mind, they are just counselors. They're advisors. They have limited perspectives. They're often wrong, but they're never in doubt. So I would like to uh, begin by reading a little story to the listeners. This is a story about a man who was troubled by his recent weight. Trying to explain how he got so heavy, the overweight man confessed to a friend that every morning he passed an enticing bakery where he walked to work. The aroma from the bakery was so tempting that he couldn't resist buying a little bag of donuts. In this way, he asked his friend for some advice. And after pondering a bit, the friend suggested that the man leave his wallet at home on the days he walked to work. And at this, the overweight man recoiled in shock. You mean you want me to steal the donuts? It, it, as we said before, it's a, a, a great example of the world we're living in at the moment, how we're making a more conscious choice, because in the UK, the our government, well, the UK government, not the Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, have decided to say, no, there's no lockdown at the moment. If you want to go out, fine. But it's up to you if you think in your conscience you don't wish to pass on the variation that variant of COVID at the moment. I think, personally, that is a better choice. Because like you said, the more you force people to do it, if I said to you, do not go out, the more likely your, your brain's going to go, hmm. Well, uh, you have to uh, recognize that most human beings uh, have not coordinated the ego senses and unconscious mind. So in many respects, like in this respect with the man with the donuts, he saw his only option by leaving his wallet at home, he saw his only option as stealing the donuts. So what did that mean? Let's look at that man's mind. First of all, the ego is addicted to things that are pleasant and has an aversion to things that are unpleasant. We already know that things that are pleasant are not always good for us. Things that are unpleasant aren't always bad for us. 
but the ego in this particular case was really attached to the sweetness of that pleasant experience the last time he had donuts with me. And the senses, same thing. The senses are addicted to sense gratification. That's their purpose in life. The senses, however, are very nearsighted. They can only see that which is pleasant to the eyes, in the nostrils, in the mouth, in the ears, in the hand, and the feet. They can't see behind the appearance of pleasure to see the pain that often follows. And the habits created by the ego and the senses over a lifetime all become stored on the hard drive of the mind. That's the unconscious, the subconscious. So in this situation, where the ma this man is gaining weight and he asks his friend, how can I lose some weight? What can I do? I keep on eating these donuts as I walk to work. The friend advised that he leave the wallet at home. And the man said, you mean, you want me to steal the donuts? So the ego and senses and unconscious mind have enslaved that human being, enslaved that human being to making a lifestyle choice that runs counter to his own good health. So your book basically is a guide on how we can use the tools you're going to give us to break yeah. down this process. Yeah. So what, what this man really needs to do is begin experimenting with his conscience. And he has to honor where the personality is at right now. Right now, obviously, the personality, the ego senses and unconscious mind, don't want to give up a donut when he's walking to work. Okay, then start with a half a donut. Give up a half a donut. Give up a quarter of a donut just for the sake of an experiment and teach the ego senses and unconscious mind to have a pleasant experience. Yeah, I get that. I can see where you're going. There, when I look at the donut, obviously the donut is the brain, and we we do do that more often now than we ever did, because, like you say, I think we got all gotten this without realizing it. We've gotten this personal rut that we all get into life, and COVID came along and went, "Ha ha! I'm going to pull this out of your rut. I'm going to pull this donut right out of your mouth, and I'm going to make it very sour." And you've got this choice, and this choice, and this choice, and you've got to go, oh, overload, overload, panic, panic, panic. Mental health, mental health, mental health. And that's why we've had all these mental health problems. I'm not saying they weren't around before then, but lots of people couldn't cope suddenly from changing their routines or their way of life. Or actually, Well, the, you, see, you see, Mark, the ego equates any form of change as a death. A, a loss of control. The ego is hardwired, it seems to me, to the reptilian brain. And the reptilian brain concentrates on the fear of being annihilated. You know, self-preservation. I don't want to die. I don't want the form to be no more. And being so attached to self-preservation it goes beyond self-preservation to just fear. The fear that I might lose what I have. The fear that I might not get what I want. That makes me frantic. That motivates me to say to my friend, Oh, you want me to steal the donuts? Like, it's a foregone conclusion that he's going to eat the donuts. <laughs> okay, well, eat a donut. But don't eat all of it. 
Make an experiment with your ego senses and unconscious mind to have a pleasant experience, to trust you and your conscience a little more. And if you can give up a quarter of a donut, you'll feel better. Not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. You'll have more self-confidence and self-reliance on the wisdom that is within you, that is you, having this human experience. And I know you use meditation a lot, and that you, we've said before, meditation can take many forms. Because technically, when we're reading a book or listening to a radio or watching a program or film, Yeah, you mean the donut? We're meditating on that as such. I know Object. people are going to say, that's not proper meditation, Mark. But you know what I mean. You, you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Yes, of course. That's right. and, and do you think by just, like you said, take that, like you, I think we mentioned before, that if we took that tiny step, if you do a little med- meditation, say just for, you say to yourself, right, I'll do it for two minutes today. Just a basic meditation, nothing fantastic. You know, just a deep breathing, like we said, deep breathing exercise. Or a... Well, for me, for me, two minutes might be fantastic. Exactly. You see. And I know last time he gave us a sample of what, a, like a meditation you could use during the day. Would you be willing to do that again for us, Leonard? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, the easiest way meditation where we sit in a straight back chair with our head neck and trunk straight and the chin slightly elevated and ideally we want to have the thumb and the index finger joined and have the palms resting on the thighs we close our eyes we bring our attention to the bridge between the two nostrils, where the nostrils meet the upper lip. And we attend to each inhalation as the air flows in, and each exhalation as the air flows out. Flows in, I'm aware of it, flowing out with the exhalation, I'm aware of it. And I'm going to ask everybody to do that with me for 60 seconds. But before we do that form of a meditation, we have to understand several things. One, it's the habit of the mind to entertain distracting thoughts. That's just the habit of the mind, and the mind has never been trained not to do that. Okay, so recognizing that's the habit of the mind, the mind is very busy, always wants to change the channel, looking for something more pleasant, more interesting. So that's the habit of the mind. But now I want to meditate for 60 seconds on my breath. Do I have to eliminate all these thoughts coming from uh, the ego or the senses or the unconscious mind? No. No. What we have to do simply when we are interrupted in our attention here at the bridge between the two nostrils, being aware and witnessing the breath, in the process If a thought arises, if an image or even a sound comes into our awareness as a distraction, we don't push it away. We're not angry or feel that we're a failure because we can't meditate for 60 seconds. Distracting thoughts, images, and sounds are part of meditation. So what do we do with those distracting thoughts, images? First, we honor them and witness them. Then, we offer them back to the origin from which they have come. 
we know that everything has come from the one, we call that G-O-D. So we offer it back. No, thank you. I have no use for this distracting thought. And then we bring the mind back here to the bridge between the two nostrils. And again we begin to witness the breath going in and the breath going out. But only for 60 seconds because we don't want to take on too much too soon. So is everybody ready? Yep. And you're ready as well, Mark? Yes, thank you. Okay, so make sure your head, neck, and trunk are straight. Chin slightly elevated, eyes gently closed, thumb and index finger joined, palms on the thighs. Bring your attention to the breath at the bridge between the two nostrils. Attend to the inhalation as the air goes in and the exhalation as the breath goes out for 60 seconds, starting I hope everybody else felt like I did. I felt like a sense of quiet, a strange sense of quiet of the brain, although the brain was listening to all the other ideas coming in my head. For that brief moment, I switched off. I, I, it always reminds me, I know this sounds bizarre, but when we do the memorial bit, the two-minute silence for the thinking of the dead during war times, you know, Remembrance Day, where the whole world seems to stop for that two minutes, more or less, that seems to me like a grand world meditation about them realizing they're doing it. Yeah. And what is happening? What's happening is the lake of the mind, which usually is very, very agitated, large waves swelling in the lake of the mind with desires and emotions. Fear and anger, desire, okay? But for 60 seconds, for the two-minute memorial tradition, the lake of the mind becomes still. And stillness, when we have a still mind, we are more eager to use our conscience to determine our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, to lead us for our highest and greatest. I also think it gets you into a better mode of mood in yourself. I know that, as you said, because we all do it. We all get days where we get our mind takes over and we get up so about the most stupidest things possible. And you know it's the most stupidest thing possible the next day. So on that day, you're thinking, it's the end of the world. That's it. I'm not doing this anymore. But you're going to make the same mistake again, obviously. But then you can reflect back on it the next day because you're not, you haven't let, as you said before, that little bit of that, the ego and probably a little bit of the the, the subconscious going, joining together and battling and going, come on, what are, you, what are you fighting this for? You know, this is stupid kind of thing. Let me ask. Let me ask you a question, Mark. Let me ask you a question. You just told me that that you experienced something very pleasant. 
And if you experience something pleasant, don't you think that the ego, the senses, and the unconscious mind also experience some kind of relief and relaxation in that 60 seconds. I believe that the ego senses an unconscious mind as they all have the same experience that they have And that will motivate them not to reject using the conscience out of hand, out of habit, but rather to experiment with it. And that's what National Conscience Month is about is about letting the experiments begin. Not necessarily starting with a whole donut, maybe a half, maybe a quarter, and see what happens. And where can we find you, can people find this, uh, your event that's happening? We have a webinar, and it's free, and it's happening on the 6th. January 2022, the 6th of January 2022, and you can get free registration on our website, AmericanMeditation.org, AmericanMeditation.org, and on the home page, there is a little notice a lovely little graphic of fireworks and it says that it's a transformational webinar let the experiments begin and if you click on that right on the home page it'll take you to the registration information which is absolutely free and then you can join us on january 6th that takes place January 6th from 7 till 8 in the evening. So it's going to be early morning where you are. But not to worry. If you can't attend live, but you register, you will still receive a free recording. I think that's, I think that's a good idea. So anybody listening in the UK, Europe, if you obviously if you want to stay up late, which I think is roughly about three o'clock in the morning i think seven is something like that something ridiculous in the morning in the uk i think it's about uh, 1 30 1 30 in the morning maybe. yeah so i won't be up but, <laughs> but but i highly recommend you watch it and listen to it or watch it back because as, as as i said before talking as talking to leonard i've learned these little techniques i mean i get life wrong and i think like leonard said you've got to own up to these things because if you don't Admit to things, you never learn. You never go forward. We can't go back. It's not a good idea going back. Well, I agree. And right now, most of us are enslaved to the habits of the mind. So we maintain that, that we have freedom. But are we really free? The answer really is no, we are not free because we're enslaved to the faulty concepts that are stored in our unconscious mind. Do you think the same thing applies to addiction, any form of addiction? Because when you learn how to deal with addiction... Yes, that is, it's all about addiction. Yeah. It's all about addiction. Absolutely. That's absolutely correct. In fact, the greatest addiction shared by all human beings is what? Our addiction to thoughts that lead us outside. That lead us outside into the material world, into the past of memory, into the future of imagination. We are addicted. But the, if the truth be known, every single thought that comes into our awareness only a suggestion of what to give our attention to. Wouldn't it, be be wouldn't it be beautiful, Leonard, if we could tap into our minds, because there must be a way somehow, that we could all tap into it and use it 
to benefit the world in different ways, like influence. I know you can't get total world peace and you can't stop diseases and whatever totally, but we could influence people more to say, look, why didn't you look into that cancer thing? You found something there. Have a go, have a look at it. You know, that kind of thing. Sort of a gentle poke rather than a full on, you got to do it. So, so, Mark, the conscience, which is the only function of the mind that can make a choice, a decision, if there is quietness in the mind, just like we just experienced, then the conscience can reflect super conscious wisdom from the super conscious portion of the mind. This is an intuitive library of wisdom that will help us to receive the wisdom and creativity to solve all of life's challenges. The super conscious portion of the mind is the same portion of the mind as I mentioned last visit where Paul McCartney Here's beautiful melody, where Albert Einstein saw mathematical equations. Where do you think these geniuses receive this wisdom? It comes through the conscience. The conscience is the conduit for our intuition. Yeah, yeah, because I, I see what you mean, because when your mind's relaxed, I have a day when I can, like today, I just, I did an article about a man called Lewis Wayne, who was a eccentric painter who used to paint cats with big eyes and made him personalities during the Victorian and oh, yes. Edwardian. Yes. Yes. And he was a man who popularised the people keeping cats, apparently, because I cats were... His wife was a painter also. Yeah, she died tragically of breast cancer, unfortunately. The cat was called Peter. And he could wear spectacles, hold a, something in his hand, uh, and play dead, which is quite clever for a cat. <laughs> I only learned that today. I was doing an article on that. I just found it fascinating. I did some recording today, and I learned sometimes I write a lot. And I find that, it's, like you said, when your mind's quiet, you seem to be super active. Like you say, the super conscious goes, oh, Mark, I'm going to do this today. This idea is coming in your head. Please act on it. Yes, that's right. And when the mind is less active and less agitated, there's not a different desire calling my attention to dissuade me from serving the super conscious wisdom of the conscious. So where can people find your book? I, I know it's on Amazon, I know it's on your site, but please mention it. Okay, thank you. Well, you can take a look at the website for the book, which is yourconscience.org yourconscience.org. That tells you a lot about the book, a little bit about myself, and it will help you make a decision about purchasing the book and beginning your own experiments in January, which is Conscience Month. And obviously you're on, I know you're on various sites as well. I know you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, I know you're on. I think you've got some little bits on YouTube as well. Yes. And I think there's more to do with the yoga, which I, I, I would try, but I'm a bit sort of, I'm not very flexible. And I think to myself, should I try it? Should I try it? I'm in that phase of, should I give it a go kind of thing? It's a dire necessity, Mark. It's a dire necessity. And if we don't believe it's a dire necessity, all as we have to do is take a look at the nightly news. 
Very true. Very Take true. Take a look at the nightly news. It's a dire necessity. Humankind is so agitated right now in such a fearful, angry panic. I'm surprised there hasn't been more rioting, rioting yet. I expected more by now. More what? More, more? more rioting, you know, like more trouble than there has been. I mean, there has been trouble, but not on the scale I thought there would be. Yeah. Well. Not I don't want it. It ain't over, over till it's over. Right? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying I want it, people. Anybody listening on YouTube? I'm not. I'm not. Ad- no. Nobody, nobody, uh, nobody is, uh, is suggesting that. No, nobody is. no. We, 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 we want peace and love, but we're really, it's really it's in the world. Just that, it's just that we're all so concerned about the condition of humanity. I, I, I'd like to read something to you. Yes, please do. This is a, a favorite quote of mine. find it. Just bear with me here. It's always the case, Leonard, you never got it on your fingertips when you want it. Gospel of Thomas. He is quoting Jesus as the Christ who says this. I took my stand in the midst of the world and in flesh I appeared to them and I found them all drunk and I did not find any of them thirsty. My soul ached for the children of humanity because they are blind in their hearts and they do not see. For they came into the world empty and they also seek to depart from the world empty. It's so sad. It's so poignant. It's so modern. Over 2,000 years since those words were spoken, and yet we're experiencing something very, very similar. That's why you and I are so concerned. We're, we're, we're not pointing fingers at anyone. I maintain it's a situation which can be rectified by learning how to coordinate the four functions of the mind, ego, senses, and unconscious mind, in service to the superconscious wisdom reflected by the conscious. To do that, we need to meditate just for one minute because in one minute, you yourself, Mark, experience a stillness in the mind. And when the mind is still, and there's no desire leading me out into the world, I can make a choice in freedom that is going to allow me to fulfill the purpose of my life without pain, without misery. Without bondage. Thank you, Leonard. I think we've uh, discussed quite a fair bit today. And we, yes, we will go and look, everybody go and check out your website, check out your fantastic book, Your Conscience The Key to Unlock Limitless Wisdom, Creativity, and Solve All of Life's Challenges, which is available on Amazon and on various websites, as mentioned. And please try that simple and easy meditation we showed today. It's so easy to do, even someone is like me can do it. Even a child of five could probably do it, I would think. 
and children also need to calm down for meditation sometimes. It is very useful for children sometimes. I know people think, oh, what do you mean? I say, well, sometimes a child needs to just shut off from all that expensive energy they've got. They've got all this limited energy that they've got to burn off. Sometimes it just pays them to say, you know, when you used to have um, at school, they used to have what they called a timeout, where they used to sit down, you had a bit of milk, and you put a pillow on the floor, and you'd lie on the floor for, I don't know, two minutes, three minutes, or long. But they didn't do that no more at school. I think that's where they miss, I think we need to teach that, that little timeout. So Leonard, what uh, we obviously you as you know the format of the show. What would you like to say your last words for today? Well, again, I'm not here to convince anybody of anything, but I am here to plant seeds, and if some of those seeds are sprouting in your awareness, in your mind, and you're interested. I would support you 100% in your experimenting with your own conscience just to see what happens. I know how I felt, and I've been doing this since the early 1970s. And I know that if I had the same habits that I had in 1971, I would either be very, very sick or I would have left the planet. And mind to you... It works. It yeah. works. It's practical. It's relatively easy. Don't take on too much too soon. Yes, yeah, so, so, as we said, try our sim the simple... Hour. The simple one we showed today, I think is fantastic. Yeah. I got out of it. Yeah. And I think that's I, that's my whole recommendation. That I, my simple... Uh, Sign off to you today is I'm going to go and make my donut in my brain. And I'm going to make sure they have a little party. The ego, the subconscious and all that. I'm going to invite him in and go, go look, lads, we're going to have to have a talk. One of you has to be dominant one day and the other has to be the dominant the other day. But we don't want that no more. We want you to all negotiate when we want, you know, I have a bit of ego. Yes, I need a bit of subconscious. Yes, I need a bit of creativity we need everything we need all need a bit of everything because without it we can't function <laughs> and also Lennon, i'd like to thank you for again for well wanting to come on my show again it's very nice that people actually turn up again <laughs> it, it always gives me great pleasure that I actually i may have made a connection which i didn't realize i had I enjoy your mind and your attitude and I believe that we do the same kind of work where we plant seeds for a living. Yes, yeah, so I think that's the only thing we can do. I've always said to people that when they when I used to work in care work, I used to say the best thing to do is suggest something rather than force something. Okay. It always worked ninety nine percent of the time. It's never going to work on everybody. <laughs> but thank you for being on the show again. And thank you for turning up. And thank you for being there. Um, I hope your your family will be okay. And stay safe. Stay well. Uh, and as we would say in England. And we don't never say in England. But I just like saying it anyway. Tutty ta everybody. Tutty ta